Good. Welcome to all the Between the White Lines crowd. As you know, this is the platform for private entrepreneurs in tennis to solve a problem that other people haven't solved all around the world. And today I'm delighted to have Mike Manzilla from New York. You got a it, New Mark Yorker. Boston. New Yorker, you got it. Good. Um, and Mike's going to tell us the story. So first of all, Mike, I think it is. Well, what's your why? Why? Why are you doing this? Uh, and what have you? What's the problem you've seen that nobody else has seen? Well, you know, I, you know, I know. As we spoke briefly the other day, Mark, I think um, you know I've been involved in in the in the tennis and racket industry for close to twenty years now. And um, you know, I think my my first why is you know I love helping others and I love providing value to others. Um, you know, I think there is, uh, you know, this, the second kind of tier to this is that with the racket sport market expanding, um, tennis, obviously we're seeing an uptick with, with the pandemic. Um, but, uh, when we're looking at some of these other sub markets, racquetball, pop tennis, platform tennis, um, you know, my personal experience is that, you know, these sports are going to continue to grow, especially pickleball. I think it's roughly a little over 3 million uh, the last I looked. And, you know, some, some people in the industry are saying that it could be up to 10 million, um, you know, in a, in a relatively short period of time. So with that, my personal experience is that, um, you know, I've been a, a tennis coach um, all the way to a general manager, tennis director. So I've been on the full gamut of, of both ends in, uh, of the industry. And, and one of the things that I'm seeing and we're seeing right now is that, especially in the, in the, in the private sector um, and commercial sector, e even the country clubs as well, that you know, with the growth of pickleball, um, I believe that there's going to be more demand for, and there already is quite honestly, um, for more well-rounded racket professionals that can coach tennis, pickleball, platform, all the various uh, sub-markets uh, of, of um, uh, the racket sports to bring into these facilities to make them more well-rounded. Um, you know, for example, right now, um, you know, I'm at a, at a private, just a six door, a six in, uh, indoor facility here, just outside of Buffalo, New York. Um, our, I, I implemented pickleball, uh, I believe it was six years ago. And just in last year from this year, we've probably tripled, uh, our numbers. So the, the sport is growing immensely. Um, and what it, what it's done is it's also provided, uh, an opportunity for clubs who are open to the fact or to, who are open to expanding their racket sport programming. Um, so we're doing a lot more volume in pickleball and just in, in our overall numbers because of it. So one of the things that this has done for uh, clubs is that now, even for myself, because I'm not uh, yet, I'm not certified to, to coach pickleball. I am now seeking individuals who can coach pickleball and or pop tennis to provide a more complete racket experience. And um, this is kind of one of the reasons that this uh, racketpros.com has uh, come up and has evolved is that I would, the idea is to make it easier for clubs, owners, directors to uh, find these pros and find, find these individuals who can expand the programming of clubs um, to a further degree in pickleball, pop tennis, platform tennis, and make everyone more discoverable as well as more accessible for, um, for the anticipated growth uh, in the market for, for owners and directors. Okay, two questions as you speak. One, is this cannibalizing tennis or growing the racket sports market for these sports to fight out market share? You know, I, a lot of people have asked me that and, you know, and I don't, I don't think it is quite honestly. And, and um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I always, I always kind of live by the concept and, and the term that, you know, activity breeds more 
activity or activity facilitates more activity. So the more activity you can drive at your facility, um, it creates an environment, it creates a, a culture, it creates an aura um, and uh, for the, for the good, if you have empty courts, if you're in a, in a location where you're, you're tennis only and you have empty courts, um, it's hard to build that atmosphere. So I, I would highly encourage, um, owners, directors that haven't done so already to start looking at it's, you know, this, you know, it's space. We're ultimately in the business, uh, and I'm, I'm just as much of a tennis traditionalist as, as anybody else. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, our job is to fill these courts and to fill space. So if we have openings midday time, maybe later at night or real early morning, um, and we have the ability to bring people in through a, an additional racket sports that where we don't have to add additional infrastructure other than maybe some, some blended lines, um, and purchasing some, some nets, um, you know, I think that it is, it would behoove the, you know, our industry um, yep. owners, managers to, to, to go about and, and do that. Yep. Um, so to answer your question, I don't see it at all uh, being, uh, you know, taking away from what we already have. Um, it, it's only really adding, adding to the experience. Yeah, I can certainly see a shift from, you know, the past because tennis was, you know, the main, if not the only racquetball sport to now a racquetball club that you have a variety of offerings and clearly each offering needs to fight for market share. I can see that. So are you looking then, because I think you are, for one coach to be multi-trained rather than have loads of different coaches keep teaching their specialities? That is that it? Yeah, it's a good question, Mark. I think it's, you know, yeah, to, to be honest, I don't know just yet because it's still evolving, but I think my personal opinion, the way I see it going, it's, it's going to be a little bit of both. I think you're going to have, um, you know, you're going to have some coaches, some, some tennis coaches who are looking to expand their skill sets and they're going to be, you know, picking up uh, pickleball platform certifications, pop certifications at some point. Um, and, you know, and then you're going to just have some individuals who are, very niche and focused on maybe just that that one particular market um you know i think it could it could certainly go both ways you know for my personal needs here you know if i you know this uh, three months ago i just hired our, you know our first racket professional um you know who in, in this gentleman um has been a a long a long time tennis coach but has also been teaching uh pickleball for the last five or six years so he's kind of been a dual a dual yeah. role um, now, you know, would I bring someone in that, uh, you know, exclusively has um, solely just pickleball experience and that's all they want to do is, is coach and develop uh, pickleball programming? You know, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I think it can go both ways. Okay. Would this suit somebody to be multi-trained, possibly based at your club, but go and teach people wherever they want to be trained? on their tennis court, on somebody's pickleball court. So could you be a, a hub for training and certification that then send people out in the community? Um, you, you're, ta you're talking, you know, specifically yeah. just our club? Uh, sure, no, you, absolutely. You and, you and Racket Pro, your, your business. So, so repeat the question one more time, Mark. I just want to be sure that I, I completely could, understand could, it. Could clubs mm -hmm. be a certification and training center mm -hmm. and in addition to training members that come into their club send these people out in the community obviously for a fee and train people wherever they want to be trained is that possible you, you mean in terms of like certifying them with uh with a with a like a ppr certification yeah. or a... yes yeah I working, mean, like, working if... through the relevant bodies Sure. I'm just looking that might be a revenue stream and a, and a yeah, authority absolutely. I mean, I, look, I you. mean, anything is possible. And I think that's just what's kind of exciting about what's what's happening now is that it's 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 opening the doors for for clubs to look at things through a different lens and and and, and see things, you know, um, you know, at, and, and start to capitalize on different opportunities. You know, if, if a club, you know, saw an advantage there and wanted to do that and wanted to be a hub, um, you know, 
you know, a- absolutely. I, I, you know, I would, I would encourage it if they, if they see that there's a need for it, for sure. Okay. Last few questions then. What's, what's missing for you right now? What would be like, if we had a, a CEO of a number of clubs that they operated, is that the sort of person you're looking to, to beat a test and get it going forward? What's missing for you? How might between the white lines help? You know, I think, you know, I appreciate it, Mark. I think right now is, you know, we are still in um, the development stage of the, of the site. Um, so right now, just, you know, doing this, Mark, is, is immensely helpful um, f- for me and, and, and the website. I'm just trying to get as much exposure and usability to the site as possible. So, again, for everybody initially here, at some point, there is going to be um, you know, some sort of, uh, of model monetization model, but that's not really my main concern. My main concern is again, my, why I'm trying to get people to use the site and, and hopefully help, you know, racket professionals across the country, across the world, become more discover, more discoverable, um, more seamlessly connect with the facilities that are looking to bring, um, these type of professionals on their staff and, and on the other end for, for employers to more uh, accessibly and easily and readily find these individuals, um, you know, whether that's across states, across countries, or it could be, you know, um, you know, it could be local right in, right in their, you know, right in their own city. So, um, so that's kind of, that's really the goal is, is getting okay. exposure and, and getting as many people, on the site initially as, as, as possible using it. Okay, last question, I promise. Obviously, there are competitors out there, I suppose, in either racquetball, but certainly in tennis, you know, sure. dot court, play court, you know, lots of other apps. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's different about yours? Why, why would they come to you rather than those? Sure, uh, you know, and I think, you know, that's that's one of the advantages of, of you know, of this whole thing is that I think competition is a great, is a great thing. And, and, and a lot of those sites are doing a, a phenomenal job. Um, I think where racketpros.com differentiates, differentiates, differentiates itself is that it's exclusively a racket sport uh, site so that it, it covers all racket sports. It's not just tennis. So I think, you know, that's, that's number one. Um, and number two, we're, we're really focusing on, um, the relationships and the connections between employers um, and the rack professionals. Eventually, again, this is still in development, but eventually we may be looking into um, kind of dialing into the actual marketplace and into players and customers, but um, that's still yet, to, that's still in the works a little bit as we, as we speak. But uh, out of the gate, it's really about the employers and the and the racket professionals and, and honing those relationships um and it's going to have a little bit more of a social social media type type feel to it it's not going to be as, as you know as like a monster.com or indeed.com there's going to be more personality to it um and it's uh yeah so that's really i think probably the, the largest thing it's a it's a racket it's a racket sports inclusive site and it's going to be a more social, fa- uh, forward-facing uh, site as well. Okay. So I said the last question, but I lied. And this is the last question. So sure. we have in our network, you know, some great people in Australia that absolutely believe in multi-sport centers uh, and people in other parts of the world. Is it relevant for you to be in touch with them now or, or not? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, look, I, I truly believe that this is the way the industry is going to, you know, evolve and move forward yep. personally, you know, you know, and we yep. were talking about this the other day, Mark, there is an uptick with tennis and, 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 you know, I, and I hope I'm wrong, uh, but I'm, I'm a bit of a pessimist and I know that the numbers are up, but when we get through all this, I'm not quite so sure yep. that that is going to last long term. So I think we still need to continue to evolve and find yep. ways to be creative. Um, and I and I agree with you. I think the, the you know thinking more multi sport is is certainly um, something that we have to consider. Yeah, beautiful, Mike. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we'll be posting that soon. And good luck as a bootstrap tennispreneur 
with an idea that you want to make happen. I wish you everything that you wish yourself. Thanks so much, Mark. I really appreciate the time and uh, having me on the having me on the uh, the show here. Very very much appreciate it. Thank you.